Hey guys, this is Keith Baker from Dusty Attic Studio, and today's quick tip is about splitting stereo files into mono. Now I'm going to kind of wing this. Uh, it's unrehearsed, so I'm just going to go through a couple of things here that I think you're going to find helpful. Uh, let's open up Studio One here. As you can see, I've got two tracks up here. Uh, one of them is, is a stereo wave file, uh, which is a piano, and the other one here is just a bass. I'll play that so you can hear it. Okay, pretty simple, right? So we get a lot of questions about how do you turn a stereo file into a mono? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, let me start this back at the beginning here. And uh, let me mute the bass. And uh, these little buttons here, you can see this, is, this means it's a stereo. And this means it's a mono. But I'm just going to show you real quick, a quick, easy way to handle a stereo file if you uh, want to make it mono so you can have uh, more control over panning. So let me start this, and then I'm going to press that button, and you're going to really hear how it drops to a, to a mono file. And then I'm going to press this. And then, of course, you have all the control. And what else you can do, let me go ahead and put that back to center. C, enter. Um, so you're thinking, okay, great. Now I got complete control. I got a stereo file that uh, is acting like a mono file. But something else you can do, if you wanted a permanent fix, uh, you can highlight the event, then on Windows, you can hit Control and then B. You're basically going to bounce it. Um, don't forget, this is set at mono still. So if I hit Control B, as soon as I see it, it bounces it permanently to a mono file, which is kind of cool. Now, let me go back on that. Um, sometimes you'll get, uh, you're thinking, wow, that's an easy way to do it. Why don't we always do it that way? Well, sometimes you'll get a stereo file from a client if you're mixing somebody else's music. And they recorded, let's say, two guitars. Uh, they made a guitar on the left side here on this channel. And then they had a second guitar player playing at the same time uh, in the right side. So now you got a guitar here and then a guitar here, and you're kind of stuck with, you know, with it one guitar all the way left and one guitar all the way right. And what if you want to make changes to that? Um, well, it's as simple as this. Um, you're going to go into where your media is. Uh, in this case, I have them, if I go into files up here, and then I'm going to go, uh, this this video, I, I just named this particular song, Videos. Um, then I'm going to go in here and look in the media folder. I'm going to go to Suso Songs. Uh, in this case, Videos. And then you'll go into your media folder. And then um, there's the piano file. See, piano MIDI, that's what it was originally. So what you do is you can select it, right click on it. You have to do this in the Explorer in Studio One. You right click it and you split to mono files. So what you're going to do is you're going to split this 
in two and watch what it does. So you right clicked it, then you click on it. Now you're going to see in here, it's still going to be the original piano MIDI file, which is what the name of the that particular track is. Okay, but what it did was it gave you the same thing. It's got the same name, but with an L and with an R. So then when you bring in, then you drag it into uh, your session. So let's grab the left one. I pull it in here, and there is a mono of just that left track. And, of course, it works the same way with the right side. So if you look at these two, this, this stereo file here, you got your, your left and your right channel. Now you got your left and your right, and it's independent. So like I said, if this was a guitar, one guitar on one channel on the left side and then a one guitar on the right, now you have them as mono, and you can do whatever you want with them. You can pan them. Um, I'll go ahead and um, let me mute all this here. And I can play these, and it's not going to, you're not going to get a whole good feel for it because this was just a regular old piano thing. Let's see what we can get out of it, though. So it gives you a little more options to do what you want. So that's pretty cool. I noticed that this doesn't show it very well because this piano, you know, like I said, if this was a one guitar and this was a different guitar that they tracked at the same time on a stereo file, then you'd really be able to see what you can do with these two. Now, let me go back and get rid of these. Right, Control Z. And we're back to our original files. But these stay in here. So, so let me go ahead and close this. Now, let's get to our mono file which is a bass uh, I'm gonna go ahead and play that for a second by itself pretty simple so let me show what you can do with this you also can turn this mono file into a stereo file by clicking it um, you're probably not going to hear much difference, but, and before I show you what the advantages are to that, let me go up here. Uh, now that we got this set to stereo, we're going to select the event. If I hit control B, now it turns that into a stereo file. That's kind of cool. So the advantages of that is, and let me take this back real quick to mono and set this back to mono and I'm gonna see if I can do this on the fly here I hope I don't make a dummy dummy out of myself let me go to my effects uh, let me go up here to the blue cat and I'm gonna go to a let's go to the flanger stereo I'm gonna drag it over here on your send um, we just set to detune and we close this so when you play it when this is still mono you're going to have the effect but it's it's still going to be mono take a quick listen sounds pretty cool but now when you come over here and you set it to stereo now it should sound very different See if I can exaggerate this flanger a bit. So 
So that's pretty cool right there. Go back to mono, and you hear it's not as dramatic. You can hear the flanger going on there, and it's giving you that um, it's giving you that feeling of it's got a really nice stereo feel to it. But when I click this here, listen to the difference. See how much more wider it gets? Uh, and there's other things you can put on there to make it sound all even more wider. Um, let me see. Let's see if they got another. Well, as bad as that sounds, you can really hear the stereo field. Hear it going back and forth. You should listen to this in headphones so you get the idea. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to turn that off because it's driving me crazy. <laughs> so that's a couple of things you can do with your stereo and mono files. Um, so you have a whole lot more options to get the sound that you're looking for. Anyway, I'm going to cut this short. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. I hope it, it was helpful for you. Uh, if you have any questions about this video or any of my other videos, uh, feel free to uh, write it down below here on YouTube. Uh, you can also reach me at www.dustyatticstudio.com. I'll put links down there um, for my website. And uh, also, you can get me in the social media groups at the Presonus Studio One group and also the Studio One Sessions group. Okay, thanks for stopping by. Have a good one and take care.